<clears throat> Good morning. Uh, so uh, uh, we are in third lecture of our course uh, MWE 6025 Crash Vehicle Crash Worthiness. Right. Uh, I hope that uh, you have gone through the new channel uh, for project component. I have also uh, uploaded some 10 papers, uh, around 10 papers um, uh, related to our uh, course. Uh, there are papers in last three, four years. Uh, you know, what researchers are focusing on these fields? Uh, I just to try to make an attempt to cover up all the syllabus content accordingly, the corresponding research activities. <coughs> Uh, of course, the textbook, whatever that we follow, all, also a compilation of uh, many literatures uh, nicely compiled uh, and put as a textbook. So if you look at every chapter end of the textbook, you have a um, uh, set of uh, number of uh, references that are cited and uh, you can always uh, refer to those references as well. Uh, addition to the papers that you uh, look at and select your topic for your J component. And you have that particular paper can be a um, kickstart paper. You can read that paper and then uh, look at those references and then uh, try to uh, uh, expand your uh, 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 literature understanding and hence the knowledge uh, in that particular specific uh, part of our course. So that's a kind of uh, objective of J component project component, which is for one credit. So I just have done it. So I hope all of you have gone through that channel and those papers and you are in the process of making groups. So maximum three members in a group, uh, but uh, you can also have a single member or two members. But uh, let us have maybe around uh, six groups also in our class. So that uh, sir, we can have. Yeah. Yes, sir, sir. Regarding reviews, uh, we are still uh, yet to decide the projects. Uh, so could you give us uh, one or two days more so that we can just uh, uh, re prepare our report of the zero review, sir? Uh, okay, okay. Maybe you are running short of time. Okay, that's not an issue. By this Friday, uh, no, uh, you can, weekend, you can just uh, upload it in uh, MS Teams so that we will have Monday afternoon. So mostly that afternoon lecture period, in case I do not take lecture, we will have discussion for J component if needed because that we have only 30 periods uh, 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 around 28 periods officially for uh, lecture hours in this semester. So we'll have to optimize that available time. Uh, you also know that at least minimum four hours, uh, no, uh, one has to work for J component, uh, but uh, there is no attendance and monetary of that. Uh, yeah, I expect that you are going through that. Uh, as you are asking, maybe uh, one day is not sufficient. Uh, I understand. <coughs> Uh, you can take till this Friday. Is that fine, Sri Asha? This weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, what you can do, see, I have put some 10, 11 papers in that uh, J component. So uh, every one of you can go through that and then you can decide uh, your interested topic. Uh, it is not only based on those papers what I have uploaded. You can also go through uh, your own literature or uh, no. Um, your uh, internet access or what is the current practice? That's what uh, I'm uh, very much interested in. Um, though we have our syllabus, which is uh, covering a century uh, history of our vehicle crash with uh, right from uh, 19th uh, uh, end of uh, 19th uh, beginning of 19th century till date, almost a century network, um, uh, century literatures are compiled and we have been going to go through it. But uh, you see that's most upcoming evolving field of vehicle design uh, focusing on uh, safety of your vehicle is concerned. And uh, we have uh, very much evident this all are very much witnessed and progressed along uh, in developed countries like US and European countries. Whereas uh, developing countries like us, uh, we have initiated uh, just for three, four years back uh, national car assessment program. Uh, new car assessment uh, uh, program and so on. So uh, like every uh, uh, countries, uh, primarily these automakers are now trying to strive for an important uh, design criterion safety. Uh, that's why they work on vehicle occupant and restraint system, VOR systems to um, have the vehicle certified uh, that the vehicle is uh, um, uh, good safety vehicle. So this is all kind of motivation why uh, we have uh, uh, such a course uh, in your master's level degree. And that would be uh, really very useful for you if you are um, having uh, understanding and 
knowledge and uh, meeting the required outcomes to face your um, uh, uh, future career right so that is what is an idea so any course that you study uh, in masters level that uh, would help you uh, to stimulate your interest and that should be capitalized by you for your career so with that idea i think our discussion and our um, get along with this course would certainly will stimulate you to pursue uh, uh, crash or tinas evaluation or the safety engineers uh, as a safety engineer as your career right so uh, let's uh, go ahead uh, with the today's uh, lecture point uh, and uh, as all of the students have joined all are there now uh, let me uh, um, share my screen uh, so what is that today i'm going to uh, uh, have this one hour lecture is on the first module of the course what is that in first module of the course that we are going to look at is we are again going to have a specific uh, um, as well as an important uh, you know sense of requirement of this uh, uh, vehicle safety and uh, uh, occupant protection so we look at uh, what are what are um, vehicles um, motor vehicle safety and uh, uh, what is the typical uh, vehicle structure uh, that are uh, gone into consideration of design uh, materials and uh, let's uh, look at uh, so critically the definition of crash worthiness and uh, what are the different goals and requirements of this crash worthiness how can we achieve this crash worthiness and what kind of uh, tests that are going in uh, conducted for uh, uh, this crash worthiness and some uh, simulation model development and their requirements so these are all something that are there <laughs> as in the first hand to get with the course in our module 1 <laughs> so we are going to uh, cover up all of those aspects in today's lectures right so let me share my screen and go ahead with the class <clears throat> so hope you are able to see the screen uh, uh, my acting by a board uh, <clears throat> lecture number 3 uh, in module 1 introduction to safety and crash worthiness right so if you look at uh, um, this uh, vehicle safety uh, motor vehicle safety uh, it is all because of the first fatality uh, in 19, 1889 in new york city uh, has happened right and that is why uh, this automotive safety field is evolved and uh, people started uh, uh, focusing on uh, safety aspects <clears throat> over the past century occupant safety has become an important design objective among all other all the performance criterion of ground transportation vehicle so what are the other uh, performance criteria is uh, it should be having good fuel economy the vehicle should have um, good performance should be able to have a good handling uh, features uh, and um, of course uh, the good ride and comfort uh, nvh aspects so along with that an important uh, uh, criterion uh, which has been focused over a century is what is the safety aspects so uh, it's very interesting that always we look at a history of uh, how this uh, term uh, vehicle safety and crash worthiness evolved so if you look at the safety era of the century can be uh, looked at in three periods one is an early period of safety from turn of century to uh, uh 1935 so in this past century till 1935 what has gone into uh, during this period to account for safety is what is some period uh, focus that we will understand and the second period otherwise called an intermediate safety period that would be between 1936 and 1965 and third period starts from 1996 it's not 1996 it is from 1966 please correct it this is 1966 1966 where you have this uh, uh, federal motor vehicle safety standards are mandated and administered by uh, national highway traffic safety administration in the period yearly period of safety when you look at what was that so much focused on that so it was more focused on uh, reduction of a tire bone um, blow out to avoid uh, loss of uh, vehicle control see you drive suddenly tires blow off 
what would happen uh, uh, the vehicle uh, steering um, uh, capability is lost so it would uh, lead to an unstable state so the tire blowouts were given more focus and tire manufacturers uh, have been uh, pressure uh, to have uh, proof uh, tires and then uh, you see a uh, self starter to eliminate uh, um, uh, the cranking of our engine so yearly vehicle the engine to be cranked and then started and it goes so if we are cranking there are associated injuries that can be uh, that are that were avoided so you see that uh, still we have kick starter in our scooter uh, though we have uh, self starter so you see that sometimes self starter in cold season is not working you hit your pedal to start your uh, scooter you get hurt so it's for a scooter similarly in the early days for a car you had um, a vehicle engine to be cranked and then you should start your vehicle that was associated with the many injuries and self starter was an another important uh, uh, introduction uh, in an automotive safety aspect <clears throat> and uh, you see apart from that you also have headlamps to provide a night visibility the headlamps were uh, not that good but uh, you had an, uh, improved headlamps uh, in the vehicle and uh, laminated glass to um, reduce the facial uh, lacerations so what do you mean by that is uh, you glare uh, so night time when you go the glass glare can be avoided so laminated glass were adopted install in the vehicle then uh, another important concept is steel body structure for better occupant protection so uh, why it's because in early days the vehicle is made of uh, uh, composite uh, uh, laminate wood panels and then they are being covered with the steel uh, sheets uh, and those wood panels were joined by uh, steel brackets and so on so the early vehicle of made of wood has been uh, <coughs> Uh, looked at to get an adaptation for steel body structure uh, uh, that was uh, uh, quite uh, good for uh, um, better occupant protection right and in addition uh, you also see this uh, uh, understanding the severity the crash test is what is today uh, mandated uh, by every vehicle manufacturer for their vehicle certification so the such a full scale crash test was conducted in early 1930s of course during that time we do not have very much advanced uh, um, modern electronics or control strategies or the dummies uh, were not there so the crash test was just done uh, in order to understand uh, overall assessment of what would happen uh, in real time accident scenarios so these are all some of the uh, highlights that uh, one should know uh, uh, as you look at a history of vehicle safety and uh, if you look at in the intermediate safety period what was that advancement that has happened so you see the crash avoidance devices uh, including turn signal so you have to go to right you have a right signal left signal that is what is turn signals introduced in vehicle uh, dual windshield wipers were there in uh, um, uh, were introduced and improved headlamps were introduced and uh, and uh, uh, test to simulate head impact into an instrument panel was established a high protection uh, um, uh, say high uh, high penetration resistant windshield uh, glass were employed um, in first the general motors conducted a very basic uh, uh, first car to barrier uh, frontal crash test without dummies and electronic instrumentation because in those early days uh, Uh, um, uh, it is an uh, initial period of such test so um, the vehicle tested were not uh, uh, include, included with the dummies and electronic instrumentation and vehicle structural performance is evaluated based on observation of crushed vehicle so vehicle crash test is carried out and then uh, you know, post crash scenario um, the critical observation of the crushed vehicle was helpful for uh, quantifying the structural Uh, performance and then seat belts were first introduced in 1956 right so these are all something uh, that uh, the evolution of uh, uh, vehicle safety uh, during the intermediate uh, period uh, that is from 1935 till uh, 1966 and the third period is uh, from 1966 onwards till date uh, what are the advancement 
so the then president uh, uh, lyndon uh, johnson signed into a law uh, the highway safety act and authorized the creation of national highway traffic safety administration in us so you can see their official website in this link and you can go through uh, 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 the many regulations are adopted uh, by this organization administered by this organization so the safety requirement are, uh, requirements uh, have been mandated by federal motor vehicle safety standards and they are uh, administered by this uh, um, uh, novel agency uh, and uh, you see there are uh, crash avoidance technologies are developed during this era uh, importantly um, we have learned that in our vehicle dynamics course in detail uh, anti lock brake system traction control system and dtrl what is dtrl What is DTRL? Daytime running lights. Huh? Daytime, daytime running lights. Yeah, daytime running lights. Uh, because uh, see that daytime running lights are become now very popular, so that uh, could alert uh, uh, on the vehicle uh, uh, drivers that are ahead or coming in front. So daytime uh, uh, running lights are you are right. and uh, such many more uh, advanced technologies are there, like uh, adaptive cruise control system so the vehicle uh, would uh, avoid collision and so on so these are all something crash avoidance technology is what has been evolved in this third period and it's still going on uh, further improvements and you could see that uh, the challenge uh, in these technologies is to have your autonomous vehicle uh um, development as well as an e mobility if you look at the architecture of your complete vehicle would be changed so there are uh, regulations for e vehicle crash readiness evaluations as well so the crash avoidance technology is uh, the very big uh, um, uh, revolutionary aspect that has been evolved in this uh, period and structural crash readiness so when you say structural crash readiness it is uh, what does nothing but a rigid steel occupant shell surrounded by strategically placed energy absorbing components so when he says rigid steel occupant cells uh, if they are not uh, the, that steel occupant cell is to have the integrity of the uh, passenger compartment but uh, at the same time the passenger compartment should not get into uh, more uh, crash pulse crash pulse uh, the dynamic loads the deceleration time history so what does that uh, uh, how does that has been achieved that has been achieved by having placed uh, uh, strategically an uh, energy absorbing component so what do you mean by strategically placing them it will be in the front side or uh, um, the pillars are very stiff on the side and uh, in the rear you have again um, uh, crumbling material so that they would practically deform and take away the uh, energy of the vehicle during uh, collision that kinetic energy of the vehicle and hence uh, uh, the energy or the crash pulse uh, realized by the occupant would be within the allowable level of uh, this ration level of a human present that so this is what is vehicle crash readiness that uh, has been uh, more focused and uh, uh, the vehicle design designers have accounted uh, on the uh, steel occupant cells <clears throat> and then occupant protection devices uh, those are uh, passive restraint systems Uh, which are essentially addition to this uh, we talk on uh, um, uh, energy absorbing components one of the important energy absorbing component is uh, steering column so energy absorbing steering columns three point belts so you have uh, uh, chest and uh, laps are constrained uh, during uh, the uh, collision of the vehicle through these belts and front and side air bags and head restraints so these are all occupant protection devices that are uh, evolved and then uh, driver performance the driver performance were very uh, good as they are being educated there are um, agencies to certify and give the licenses to drivers this all are also uh, been mandated and during this period <clears throat> and highway construction the highway constructions are supposed to be accounting uh, for the smooth operation of uh, vehicle and should have all uh, um, protection that pedestrians are unnecessarily not entering so all such safety guard and then 
uh, highway uh, administration uh, are uh, focusing or imposing on this highways uh, constructions. So these are all something that uh, you would see the development and vehicle safety uh, in this uh, uh, recent era, recent period. So this is what something that uh, should come in your mind uh, and you say that uh, vehicle, uh, motor vehicle safety. So if you look at uh, automotive structural materials and characteristics, automotive structure can be looked at in two ways. One is body over frame structure. Another one is unit body structure or it is unibody structure called. <clears throat> so, you know, basically the structure is designed for the purpose of uh, carrying out uh, static and dynamic loads uh, during the life cycle of your vehicle. And the exteriors are designed for a uh, uh, reduction in uh, aerodynamic drag coefficients. And interiors are designed so that uh, are able to have a complete restraint systems and comfort um, compartment for the occupants. And uh, the entire vehicle have been structure have been designed with uh, today's uh, technology of stamped steel panels. So these are all something uh, when you look at the vehicle structures, you see these are the um, necessities uh, that go into having an automotive structure and that structure can be looked at uh, as the body on frame structure it will have a chassis a chassis should have a provision to have its powertrain employment uh, and transmission um, and um, other important um, accessories like fuel tank uh, and so on and suspension to be mounted on chassis over which the body is been uh, um, employed uh, so uh, you will have three parts uh, in body on frame. One is the frame and then vehicle body. Uh, uh, and uh, you see the um, uh, cabin, uh, uh, the vehicle uh, um, structure, right? And uh, what is this concept of uh, body in white or unibody construction is? Uh, it, is uh, it is an integrated uh, vehicle body. So you do not have a separate chassis or a frame over which the body is bolted. Instead, uh, you have this and this is uh, essentially made of steel structure and uh, the um, uh, advancement of um, uh, manufacturing uh, technologies like uh, um, spot weld technology uh, of joining uh, parts have been uh, widely used uh, in such kind of uh, body construction. And uh, if you look at um, this uh, automotive uh, structural materials, until 1920, vehicle bodies were built from a composite of wood panels joined with steel brackets and steel sheets were added over the panels to provide a better surface to hold the paint. Hold the paint. Due to formability of steel sheets, so steel sheets can be formed according to the shape. So it's a characteristic of the steel sheets. So due to formability of steel sheets and durable dies, the dies are there to make your own uh, shape of uh, shape out of the steel sheets and spot well technology uh, 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 made the stamped steel panels uh, to be employed in mass production of vehicle bodies. Right? Uh, that is how the vehicle mass production started and uh, the first steel vehicle body is in 1924 by Doge uh, was built. So continuing with uh, uh, this, uh, understanding what is vehicle crashworthiness in yesterday's uh, lecture itself is pointing out this. The term crashworthiness first evolved from aerospace industry and it was coined or termed as the measure of the ability of a structure and any of its components to protect the occupants in survivable crashes, right? So an aircraft crash happens and it falls and uh, that should not get into fire first of all and uh, complete aircraft uh, uh, cabin should be uh, preserved uh, uh, that means the structure should not um, go into pieces so these are all something uh, that were the requirement of crash worthiness of your aircraft industry and that has been um, mostly achieved with the uh, material technology of composites uh, wherein it is not only supporting a lightweight technology, also able to have um, the protected occupant uh, survival cabin crash uh, during crashes. So this is something what is crash worthiness definition as far as uh, from aerospace industry initially coined. In automotive industry, if you look at the crash worthiness uh, um, <clears throat> refers to a measure of 
the vehicle's structural ability to plastically deform and yet maintain a sufficient survival space for its occupants in crashes involving reasonable deceleration loads. So nicely coined words. Uh, so you should uh, uh, always utter as it is when you want to uh, make a statement of crashworthiness definition. Of course, uh, the restraint systems and occupant packaging provide additional protection to reduce uh, severe injuries and fatalities. Right. So the plastic deformation of frontal uh, structure uh, is taking away the maximum energy uh, during impact and uh, providing an integrated uh, um, protected cabin. Now that's only not sufficient. There are part of energy which are not taken by this plastic deformation of front structures during frontal collision uh, would enter uh, and uh, uh, be uh, uh, exerted onto the occupants. So in such times, the occupant should be restrained completely, would be uh, uh, having more chances of uh, saving the life. So that is where the restraint system is important uh, and the occupant packaging uh, has come. So when I say occupant packaging, it is what all steel shell with the all steel shells with the uh, appropriate strategically placed uh, uh, shock absorbing or uh, energy absorbing uh, materials components, right? So this is how one should uh, talk or define what is vehicle crashworthiness. And what is the what are the goals of this vehicle crashworthiness? The main goal is vehicle crashworthiness and occupant safety. Of course, that's uh, um, that's a uh, primary expectation. And integrity of passenger compartment. So uh, passenger compartment should be uh, uh, maintained in the event of severe crashes. Simultaneously, what is important is controlling the crash pulse, that is deceleration time history to fall below the upper limit of human tolerance. So this has to go hand in hand. So during collision, the integrity of passenger compartment is achieved simultaneously. The crash pulse uh, influence should be within uh, the upper limit of uh, human tolerance. In crash deceleration pulse with an yearly peak in time and a gradual decay is more beneficial for the protection of a restrained occupant. So if you look at uh, this entire crash events are in milliseconds. So within few milliseconds, uh, you see uh, you should have your, the peak that has been experienced in deceleration and that has to gradually decay. Uh, and gradually decay means not prolonged duration. Within that uh, uh, limit of milliseconds, it has to gradually decay to, uh, uh, so that the restrained occupant would be protected. So this is kind of uh, um, crash pulse that has to be experienced in your vehicle during crash to protect a restrained occupant. <laughs> so therefore, how can you define uh, uh, this important goal? The goal of crash worthiness is an optimized vehicle structure that can absorb the crash energy by controlling vehicle deformation while uh, maintaining adequate space so that uh, the residual crash energy can be managed. So the word managed is very important. Uh, managed by the restraint systems to minimize crash loads transferred to the vehicle occupants. <clears throat> so accident reconstruction and analysis of vehicle crash data provide information regarding the safety performance. And currently vehicle crash worthiness is evaluated in four distinct modes. What are those? One is frontal impact, side impact and rear and rollover crashes. So these are the four modes uh, the vehicle crash worthiness is evaluated current uh, in the current practice. So these are all something the goals of crash worthiness in the vehicle. And uh, crash worthiness requirements. What are the requirements for this crash worthiness? See, if you see these all words, you know, it is all uh, uh, the same things coming after and after it appears. So you should understand critically the title of these slides. So crash worthiness requirements means what made to have this crash worthiness in the vehicle. That's what. So see sufficiently stiff uh, in bending and torsion of your vehicle is for ride and handling. So we know ride and handling means what. So you require vehicle body to be uh, sufficiently stiff uh, that should not bend easily or that should not have twist easily. Right. So that uh, you will have only rigid body motions. What are those rigid body motions? You will have bounce, you will have roll or you will have uh, pitch motion. 
so if you have uh, not stiff bending and torsional um, um, structure what would happen addition to that you will also have flexural modes which are more annoying that would induce harshness in your vehicle that's what is the second point um, second point that would have high frequency excitation uh, would uh, cause four of vibrations that give rise to harshness so if your vehicle is more stiff the body would have only rigid body motions and we have looked at that rigid body motion amplitudes uh, or rms acceleration levels can be uh, nicely controlled by means of uh, uh, your suspension uh, system that's what in vehicle dynamics course that we have studied so it is an important uh, aspect apart from that uh, if you look at uh, crash with in a safety point of view the range of um, occupants uh, in terms of sizes means uh, uh, elder people younger people children uh, and gauges by the ages and uh, sizes means a bulky person or a thin person uh, and crash uh, speeds various crash speeds uh, though the standards required uh, the specific speed uh, the test is conducted and uh, uh crash routine is evaluated but you have vehicle would have crash speeds and uh, different kind every crash scenario is not uh, uh, unique it is different in every time right so uh, and of course it's for both genders uh, should be matching so how are those uh, what are those requirements so if you look at them this is follows as this deformable yet stiff front structure with the crumble zones to absorb the kinetic uh, crash kinetic energy deformable rear structure to maintain integrity uh, deformable rear structure is mainly to have protection of your fuel tank most of the vehicle fuel tank is there in the rear and the uh, rear crumbling uh, zone uh, attachment in the rear would uh, protect your fuel tank so that would uh, um, prevent uh, um, firing of your vehicle during crash <laughs> and properly designed side structure and doors to minimize intrusion so when side vehicle is uh, 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 getting crashed uh, uh, then uh, uh, the intrusion should be minimum uh, so that uh, um, the safety can be uh, uh, realized so strong roof structures are very important so the stiff strong roof structures are important during roll over protection so vehicle roll over but still you see the cabin cavity should be maintain so we could see that in uh, most of the films so um, severe accident would happen uh, it will roll over uh, you see that uh, complete uh, restraint systems are in act uh, uh, you see uh, seat bags are blown up uh, air bags are blown up and uh, all you know the driver and occupants are surrounded by air bags uh, and um, we, um, during collision um, the driver is not hit on the steering column because of the Um, belt restraints and so on and uh, you see that uh, the complete vehicle integrity during roll over is maintained that's all because of strong roof structure and uh, you see that hero comes out of the vehicle uh, even after the roll over uh, that's possible uh, uh, safety measures in the vehicle <coughs> right so similarly uh, if you go through further the properly designed restraint system that work in harmony what is the meaning of harmony they have to work in time that is very important so if accident scenario happens the airbags deployment should be before uh, the movement of uh, uh, the driver or the passenger because the movement of driver or passenger is all of a sudden within few milliseconds uh, because of uh, crash uh, uh, dynamic pulse and that would act as a rebound energy so the uh, people will be thrown forward so that would uh, be restrained so the uh, belts and airbags all should be in harmony in action together to protect uh, uh, the occupant right so harmony with the vehicle structure so vehicle structure also is not a, so it's all simultaneous event and uh, they have to be happening those events should be happening uh, 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 in the appropriate orders so the front structure crumbling the plastic deformation is the first thing the energy transfer is the second thing uh, but the energy transfer realized by the uh, um, occupants uh, is an event before that an important event of act of restraints to come into picture so this is all something uh, very important so designing them is not uh, 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 individually is not a task making them all working uh, in harmony together is what is very important 
right? That is an important requirement uh, of vehicle crashworthiness. And accommodate various chassis designs for different power trains, locations, and drive configurations. So these are all some of the requirements that go in uh, uh, designing vehicle crashworthiness. How can you achieve this uh, crashworthiness? So when I say this, uh, you have to look at uh, the role of uh, structural crash with engineers or safety engineers, they're called, over a traditional structural analyst. So what does the traditional structural analyst, uh, maybe an engineer who works for uh, designing the vehicle for its uh, static and dynamic uh, uh, loads during steady operations, uh, vehicle dynamic engineer. So you would be more worried about looking at um, power plant uh, efficiency, uh, looking at how good uh, the emission in a vehicle, looking at uh, um, uh, uh, how good my uh, vehicle performance, that uh, traction is achieved, what are my um, um, uh, uh, transmission systems to be employed in my vehicle, and uh, what are the tire selections so that uh, I would have good handling, good grip of my vehicle on. So these all main date, uh, uh, aspects are being looked at a traditional structural analyst what are the counterpart is the safety engineers are called the structural crash worthiness engineers so what are their tasks so the traditional engineers work on elastic deformation principle whereas crash worthiness engineers work on plastic deformation principle so their uh, role is to have this uh, design of vehicle to deform uh, during uh, collision plastically Whereas the uh, elastic deformation is what is strength of maturity approach for design of components, right? So this is what is to come in your mind. So to achieve crash worthiness, uh, we have to work as a safety engineers um, along with the traditional structural analyst. It's complementing each other. And then structural optimization. What does it mean by structural optimization here? Vehicles should be stiff at the same time light structures. The light structures can um, plastically deform and take more energy, but it should be stiff. Uh, stiff is what is the cabin compartment. So steel uh, shells uh, or steel cells it is. Uh, so uh, strategically mounted light uh, energy absorbing structures. So these all are important. Why it is uh, termed as optimization here is you have to have a lighter vehicle. At the same time, you also have to have a stiff. So if you have to work on uh, um, protection of your vehicle integrity, uh, uh, there would be a compromise with the uh, crash uh, uh, energy. So if you have to reduce that, uh, you have to make your vehicle uh, to crash more. So the reconstruction of your uh, um, uh, vehicle after uh, severe crash uh, is what is bringing in this term optimization. So typically safety engineers accomplish the crash worthiness goal using a combination of crash avoidance and crash worthiness measures. So we have looked at what are this crash avoidance uh, technologies like ABS, traction control system, uh, or daytime uh, running lamps, uh, or adaptive cruise controls. These are all something crash avoidance technologies. Crash worthiness measures are uh, the safety engineer's role and design engineer's role to accommodate uh, materials that to crumble and take away more energy through plastic deformation. So conduct of crash tests and accountability of biomechanics injury mechanisms also very important. So in order to achieve this crash worthiness, we have to have. So you see the vehicle manufacturer is not doing one or two vehicle crash worthiness. They do batch of vehicle crash worthiness. More number of vehicles are crash tested um, for the certification, and uh, also uh, um, accounting what would be uh, the study of uh, um, biomechanics injury mechanisms of occupant. So that all have been uh, done uh, parallelly in order to improve the vehicle safety, and hence uh, that would lead to achieve the crash worthiness uh, nicely. So this is what is the term achieving crash worthiness that you would look at in your syllabus in module one. And um, what are different crash worthiness tests? So in spite of the tremendous progress achieved in crash worthiness simulations, vehicle certification relies on laboratory tests such as component test, sled test, and full scale barrier impact test. So these tests are important. So then only the certification is done. So though uh, on one side computational techniques 
super computers development um, uh, readily available finite element codes like ls dyna madimo palm crash and so on so many uh, softwares for having a vehicle uh, simulation and to carry out such test but in reality to have your vehicle uh, uh, certification you require a laboratory test mandated by fmbss and uh, by uh, because of that there are many new car uh, assessment program in many countries yesterday that we have been discussing that uh, our country is the 10th country in the world to go for it in the year 2017 and the establishment started and still it is in the uh, evolving process of uh, certification through laboratory test what are those uh, laboratory tests those are of three kinds component level test sled test and full scale barrier impact test so that's are those are those three categories so component tests are conducted to obtain what dynamic and or quasi static responses of loading of an isolated component so these uh, uh, isolated component testing would be useful to have their uh, dynamic stiffness data uh, in order to have mathematical models uh, and in prototypes to use identifying the crush mode and energy absorbing capability so these are all something that to know for an individual component an individual component tests are conducted and what are sled test and uh, uh, and how are they conducted so the sled test are uh not in an entire vehicle uh, crash test it is a part uh, test so the sled uh, test is conducted with the help of vehicle bug so what do you mean by vehicle bug you would create a vehicle cabin uh, in a laboratory on a test rig and that would be uh, uh, representing uh, that would have a provision to put a, a compartment that would have a compartment with all or some of its interior components what are those in a vehicle you see is a seat so you'd have a sled test setup will have a seating arrangement to what you see in your car instrument panel what you see in front of your driver that uh, front instrument panel will be there steering system would be there and seat belts and airbags so this all would be there in a sled test uh, uh, vehicle bucket is called so once you have this and that uh, uh, mechanical surrogates of humans what are those are nothing but anthropometric anthropomorphic right anthropomorphic test devices uh, they are only called as dummies they will be placed in place of uh, driver or uh, sometimes cadaver subjects to uh, subjects are uh, seated in the bug to simulate the driver and the passenger responses crash pulse so determination of crash pulse is what is an important task during crash test full car test how are they done uh, all we will be studying in detail in uh, upcoming modules to evaluate the occupant response in frontal impact and side impact so in the sled test this uh, dummies would be placed to look at uh, uh, the response uh, for the crash pulse and primary objective is to evaluate the strength performance from dummy sensors data and high speed photography data photography data so on the what is the main objective of the sled test the sled test is can, uh, uh, carried out to understand kinematics of a dummy so that we will know the dummies are similar to that of the driver and passengers uh, how are they uh, responding for the crash pulse that's the primary objective and uh, those uh, 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 data would help us to quantify the performance of seat belts airbags because the harmony uh, 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 of deployment of these restraint systems are important that we have just been speaking so uh, that is what is an evaluation criteria so the restraints are uh, performing better or not all to see uh, you would have this uh, um, sensors mounted in dummy as well as the high speed uh, camera photographs so these data are uh, quite useful uh, that is another second kind of uh, sled test in this crash worthiness evaluation so the third test is full scale barrier impact test so collision of a guided vehicle so you see here the term guided vehicle so it is not driven over the barrier 
towards the barrier. It's a guided vehicle. So you, it will be uh, stretched and then it is released and it will go and bank on the uh, uh, barrier. So collision of a guided vehicle propelled into a barrier at a predetermined initial velocity and angle. So these uh, velocity and angles are prescribed by the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard by 208 uh, um, uh, standard for frontal barrier. Similarly, you have uh, yesterday we have seen uh, different uh, uh, standards of FMBSS numbers are catered for different tests. <clears throat> so the tests were conducted as for this uh, standards. So frontal impact with the barrier zero plus or minus 30 degrees. So it can be uh, straight front uh, impact or it, uh, you have a rigid barrier at 30 degree angle, it is heat plus or minus. Unrestrained dummies in the driver and right passenger, uh, right uh, uh, front passengers. So you see that uh, the uh, code 208 FMVSS, uh, the test has got the dummies which are not constrained. Right, unrestrained dummies. In uh, NCAP, that is the new car assessment program, you have high speed impact tested with the restrained dummies. So these are all some of the differences that you would see in uh, the uh, full scale barrier test. So we are going to look at them in more detail. What are these tests and so on in the next module? And this is what uh, yesterday also we have seen that what are these tests, uh, full barrier uh, impact uh, uh, test, full scale test. And you see there is a side bullet vehicle hitting on the vehicle, uh, side impact test. And this is what is called a sled test. So this is what is called a sled test. So the vehicle buck is created with the seat and you have dummy placed, so you have belt restraint system. And you have uh, uh, complete uh, um, uh, foot uh, rest like uh, you have uh, how in your vehicle all. Uh, of course, in this picture, there is no steering column appearing. You can also have a steering uh, wheel and steering column arrangement in this, all right? So that uh, uh, the input to this uh, uh, sled is the crash pulse uh, data that is obtained uh, from the uh, frontal crash test. So that uh, the energy, residual energy after the impact, whatever is there, if that are uh, acting on this, you would be able to completely predict kinematics of this uh, um, dummy. And that helps us to um, come out with the um, uh, severity index and measure of safety. So these are such tests. And then uh, finally, uh, on one hand, we have many tests. On the other hand, we have many models, crash worthiness models uh, required uh, meant to us met. So the requirement of uh, crash worthiness models should have the following. So what are those? Uh, it should have. A, it should be an accurate model. It should account speeds. Uh, and the speed means what? Uh, let us go as uh, per this list here. Accuracy. So what do you mean by accuracy? The models should be able to yield reasonably accurate prediction of essential features being sought. So your model should resemble the results what are obtained from the full scale test uh, conducted over rigid barrier or deformable barrier. So then the model is evaluated. You can use this model repeatedly uh, uh, because of its accuracy for product development. <laughs> and then, then speed. What is speed here? The model should be executable with a reasonable turnaround time not to exceed 12 hours uh, regardless of its size to allow the iterations and parametric studies. So, so you should have a good computational facility and supercomputer support today it's possible uh, uh, so that uh, you, know, you would be able to have the speeds of uh, uh, carrying out uh, test simulations and robustness. So small variation in model. So the parametric study should be possible. Small variation in model parameters should not yield large model responses. So that is also what is called a robustness. That is another requirement. And uh, importantly, the development time. So when I have to go for uh, having model uh, development for crash happiness, the time should not exceed beyond two weeks. The model could be built in a reasonably short period of time, not exceed two weeks. So these are all uh, the uh, important crash worthiness model requirement. So this is all something that we'll have to go in hand uh, to know 
uh, are to march towards to understand the content of our course and detailed study of this course, how this fundamentals of uh, engineering mechanics are employed, uh, what are the different collision models, how these tests, uh, whatever we have seen in last few slides are conducted, how the test environment are there, more details of uh, instruments that are involved in carrying out the test, the results that are obtained from the test, how are they interpreted, how do you um, obtain the crash uh, pulse data, uh, how the high speed camera photographs are quite useful. So you, you have to go to an environment of uh, test uh, uh, laboratory and then you have to understand all of them. And then uh, we also have a uh, uh, detailed study of uh, injury mechanisms uh, and uh, that would help how to improve the crash happiness that is in a separate module. And we also have a uh, uh, separate study of uh, the dummies uh, uh, history and evolution. Uh, for uh, crash with uh, uh, test. So what are the family of dummies? Uh, uh, those dummies are how useful to find out the severity index and so on. So like we have very specific and detailed study uh, in our course uh, that we are going to go ahead with our upcoming modules. So these are all something the content of first module and it is giving you a kind of uh, stimulation or motivation for the course. So that's how I perceive this module and uh, have uh, uh, oriented uh, the course with this uh, few slides that I have prepared uh, and uh, delivered to you. And uh, you can have a reference for this. Today's lecture is the textbook, first module, first chapter of the textbook, around 10 pages are there. You can read them so that uh, you would uh, see that and appreciate this lecture, right? So with that note, uh, let me stop today's lecture. Uh, if you have any questions or doubts, you can ask. I would be uh, answering. Otherwise, I will end the lecture now. You have anything to ask? Any any comments or anything uh, so far what we discussed? Or you can also say that you have understood. It is interesting. No doubt, sir. sir. No doubt, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah, Sri Sai has uh, no doubts. Yes, sir, no doubts. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Is it an interesting course? Um, yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of uh, information that you have to learn upon. Uh, good day to all of you. So uh, we will meet again tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, right? Uh, I was telling uh, 